So, um, I figured I wanted it to, um, to just video this for some reason. Um, this is an Intel Compute Stick. Um, it's the Ubuntu version, as you can see here. Um, and it's the first gen Compute Stick, which, uh, you can read the specs if you really care. Um, this is a few years old at this point. Um, but unfortunately, yeah, but, and unfortunately, it was kind of doomed from the start. It was a little bit of a stupid idea, if you ask me. Um, I don't know who would want a computer and a stick. Um, especially at the price they were asking for these, which I think was $100 for the Ubuntu one, or 150 for the Windows one. Um, though I could be wrong. I, I'm pretty sure the base model was 100 and, you know, the base model is the Ubuntu one, but the Windows one could have even been more. Um, I, I really, you, don't, don't quote me on that, just double check it if you really care. I don't, because they're not that much anymore, um, because there's a few years old and there's lots of unsold stock, and this one had shrink wrap on, I took it off. So this was brand new in shrink wrap, uh, $35. So same cost as a Raspberry Pi 3. And this has some unique features that the Pi 3 doesn't. One moment, sorry. Okay, so we got the uh, top part off. And here we have the compute stick itself, which is significantly smaller than a Raspberry Pi. In fact, I'll grab a Pi 1 for reference. One moment, please. So here is a Pi 1 Model B+. Plus. You can see... It is shorter than the compute stick, but it is significantly wider and fairly significantly uh, taller if we got them side by side. Well, it's not actually that significantly taller. Okay, whatever. This is still quite small. Um, lifting out this, we get some documentation that no one cares about. We get an HDMI extension lead, um, micro USB cable, and some death adapters. Uh, those aren't actually death adapters. The death adapters are the ones that um, a death a, a death adapter is the dap uh, is those are those universal adapters. But um, this, this is a little bit sketchy. Um, but it does actually include a power brick and cable, which the Raspberry Pi do not. It also has 8 gigabytes of built-in storage, as you might have seen on the spec page, um, instead of requiring an SD card like a Raspberry Pi would. Um, which actually make this more affordable than a Raspberry Pi for a full x86-based computer. Admittedly, it's not a very powerful one, and admittedly, it can't do anything, um but run Ubuntu because it doesn't have enough storage for Windows. Um, I mean, you can maybe get Windows booting off a flash drive or whatever, but... Um, I have a specific use in mind that I attempted to do with a Raspberry Pi that I couldn't, and I needed a low-power x86 device such as this. Um, and for the price, this is hard to argue with. Um, so we can see it includes a EU um, power adapter. I'm not in the EU, so I won't be using that. A Great Britain power adapter. And I think this is what they have in Australia. Um, and here's the American one, which is what I'm going to be using. Um, North American one, the Canada, um, do, does Mexico use these? I don't know if Mexico uses it. Uh, but Canada and the USA use these. Um, so you can see we have our very nice, um, power adapter with its stupid glossy finish that's going to attract a bunch of fingerprints. I don't know why this has a glossy finish. Um, how many amps is this? Two amps. Uh, so this is a decent power adapter. Spending way too long on the power adapter. I'm sure you, all you guys want me to go and power this up. Um, and fortunately, we have a compact HDMI monitor here um, where we can just plug this in to the top. Except we can't because we need the HDMI extension lead because it's hitting the power lead. So we get the HDMI extension lead. It's coming in handy already. Um... Plug that in, 
And shoot. There we go. Um, and then we're going to grab... Um, let's see if the micro USB cable reaches. Because I need to actually pre-prepare a micro USB cable. Because I, I don't know what I was thinking. I should have just pre-prepared a micro USB cable. Um, I would say this is a three foot cable. Um, I'm not sure. Doesn't really matter. They're so easy to get hold of. And cable. Duh, it's going to be very close. It reaches, kind of. It reaches. There we go, HDMI. Hey! It's booting. Um, we still need to plug in our keyboard and mouse, and we need something to weight this down, because this monitor is stupid and keeps falling over. Um, let's grab a book. What book should we grab? Any book will do. Is it not a soft cover? Okay, we're just grabbing this. And we're just going to prop it up from behind. Or not. So does it need another book? There we go. Uh, so this has Ubuntu 14.4 out of the box. Um, which is getting somewhat long in the tooth at this point. Um... I'm going to plug in the keyboard. This only has a singular USB port, which is a little bit sad. Um, I would have personally foregone the micro SD card slot for an additional USB port. Um, but, hey... I don't normally film in here. There we go. Um, so... Yeah, no, you can't see that. That's, I'm going to pull the keyboard out so you can't follow my key presses. Stop falling over. And this monitor is cropping. Um, so while I do this, um, especially now that I'm naming it, I should talk about my use for this. Um, I want to use this as a print server. Um, so our, we have a Dell laser printer, um, that doesn't natively support Google Cloud Print or AirPrint, um, so what I want to do is... Um, run a print server. And there are Linux drivers available available for it, but they're only available for 32-bit Linux. You can get them working on 64-bit Linux. It's um, not that difficult. There's plenty of guides for it online if you Google the model of printer. It's a Dell C170NW, I believe. Um, right here. Dell c 17 I, it might be a 6-0-NW, sorry. Um, huh. The monitor is really cropping. I think we're going to have... Hopefully we can adjust that once this finishes. But you can clearly see this is full Ubuntu, which... Um, 
even on a modern Raspberry Pi 3, is um, not really possible. I mean, you can run Ubuntu Mate, but I don't think there's actually a version of Unity for the Pi. And uh, even if there was, Unity's a little heavy on system resources for the Pi. And I don't know how it's going to run on this, because this isn't much faster than a current-gen Pi, um, I don't believe. They, they both have quad-core CPUs, um, and this quad-core CPU is you know, getting decently old at this point. They both have a gig of RAM. Um, so I don't think this is an especially fast device. Hopefully this isn't prompting me for something that I can't see at the bottom. Do do do. We can move the position of things. The horizontal position is more or less fine. The vertical position, we might want to move it up a little bit. Oh, no, that's the on-screen display. Huh. This is really not working very well. I think it's still doing stuff. Uh, I, I'm just going to let it run for a little bit. Um, I, I'm assuming it'll pop up when this is done. I hope I don't have to hit like continue down here or anything. Um, well, actually, my cursor can't move much down, so there's not anything to hit. It's just I can't see the bottom of the window, which is kind of weird. Um, so it's fine, I'm gonna pause this and let it run for a little bit. Um, and then that's probably gonna be all for this segment of the video and I'll, um, I'll, I'll reconvene once I, um, I'm probably just gonna enable SSH and just do it remotely. Um, once I start installing the print server. Uh, which I will be using cups for for um, most of it, though you obviously need uh, Chrome to do cl cloud printing. Um, so yeah, that's it. And I'll be back shortly.